Okay, but not for real. Does anyone know what happened to the Faraday future? Like, seriously, why did we stop getting the exclusive special event where we used to have access to some, you know, blueprints of this car? Well, today I will explain to you everything you need to know about this weird looking car background and context while you see some laps recorded by one of the few players who actually got the chance to six star this car and who also has the skills to do some multiplayer laps with it, AN. So with nothing else to add, let's get into it. The first time Faraday Future appeared as a brand within the Asphalt Saga was back in Asphalt 8 when the Faraday Future was introduced in a festival around one year and a half ago. That car, which people knew because Supercar Blondie made a video about it, turned out to be a game changer mostly thanks to its insane speed recovery which, combined with a great handling, made it one of the best cars of the entire game, despite not being one of the highest ranked ones. But the fact that the Faraday Future FF01 was added to Asphalt 8 made nothing if we talk about Asphalt 9 since you know there are plenty of cars in Asphalt 8 that are either not at in Asphalt 9 or straight up not planned to be added like for example the Audis or some Toyotas or that stuff you know. But you know that wasn't the case of the Faraday Future FF01 since it arrived at Asphalt 9 through a brand new kind of special event called Road Test which eventually turned out to be a shorter drive syndicate with a catch which in my opinion, made it objectively worse than a drive syndicate. In the road test, as many of you may know, you used a lone version of the Faraday Future, which you could only keep at your garage for a limited amount of time until, you know, the road test ended, and which allowed you to gather the original Faraday Future 01 blueprints in order to log and start it up. The funny thing though was that you had to upgrade and basically gold max the loan version and not the real one whose upgrades would be reset until the next road test in order to get enough blueprints to four stars a real Faraday future. Since the road test itself didn't allow you to get any further blueprints aside from the ones required to strictly four star the car until the next road test. Oddly enough though, people found a way to work around the fact that your loan version of the Faraday Future ended up being reset after the road test ended, and it was as easy as not claiming your converted road test coins once the event itself ended, and that way your loan car will keep the upgrades you applied and you will be able to progress way farther the next time road tests appear. And since the event milestone rewards were reset but your loan car wasn't, many people managed to max out the real version of the Faraday Future, I mean the very you could keep in your garage as a result of that bug, that glitch or whatever you want to call it. But of course, as it always happens with this kind of stuff, once that Gamebloat realized about that funny thing going on while they keep reintroducing road tests in the following updates as a side special event, they decided to put a stop to the event until they realized how to fix the error that allowed people to max out a car meant to be more exclusive, as it was the case with the Faraday Future. So the road test stopped appearing and now is when we dive deep into the background behind the Faraday Future as a brand. Back when Faraday Future was introduced in Asphalt 8, people started to point out how could that be possible since, you know, the brand was having a rough financial situation and guess what? Today, the brand has a 85% chance of going bankrupt, as some analysts say, with huge debts racking up and more people than ever saying that the company has its days counted. So overall, I do really think that there is a real chance that the Faraday future ends as a frozen car as it's the case of the Toroidion, whose company ended up in bankruptcy about around the same time it was added and the car never appeared again ever since. The fact that the event where the Faraday used to be featured could be that easy to work around as a result of a simple bug, combined with the financial hardships the company owner of its license is being through, makes me think that this is probably one of the most fatal coincidences of, for a car that was quite good in Asphalt 8 and well in Asphalt 9. Let's talk about the Faraday Future FF01 performance in Asphalt 9. Well, 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 you know, the Faraday Future FF01 was conceived as a high acceleration car within the Asphalt 9 meta, with an acceleration value of slightly over 86 points, which in all honesty was quite good, let's get real here. The car also has a top speed of 444 km per hour, which puts it at the same level in terms of top speed with the Rymac Nevera, which is probably the most solid, balanced and well-rounded high acceleration car of the entire game. And get ready guys, because from this point onwards, I I don't think there is anything good in the Faraday's future performance. So the biggest weakness that this car has is with no room of any kind of doubt, the drifting. This car has a bad drift radius and as the cherry on top of a cake of pure mediocrity loses a massive amount of speed which will make you lose on this car if you race 
even against A-class cars on any track with a twisty section longer than expected. As you will see in one of the races of this video where at the S corners in Greenland, AN, which is a great player, can't even catch up as a result of a massive speed loss and I will be honest, that is the biggest issue that the Faraday Future FF01 currently has. If we have a look at the handling, we can see that this car isn't the most comfortable car to steer either and with the nitro efficiency, the spike is not really really bad with a value of 51 points, once it's golden, doesn't really help to make this car way more competitive against most of the other high acceleration cars of the Asphalt 9 meta. But you know what, in a certain way I can understand why Gameloft decided to not to give this car a true king status, because in the end the road test wasn't meant to make the path of mixing out this Faraday Future FF01 easy at all, basically for the reasons I explained before, so if the car is not really really good, people wouldn't worry too much about not having it or just, you know, not being able to get it. That's from my point of view though, because it's not the same as the Devil 16 uh, Drive Syndicate 8, because the Devil is the king of the entire game, and if it was easy to get, the game would be a complete mess. So moving back to the Faraday Future FF01, it wasn't meant to be easy or cheap to get, and that combined with not the very best performance as we could see, didn't really make it worth a shot. Honestly, I did not even consider to waste a single dollar on upgrading a long version of a car that wouldn't keep the upgrades I pay for until the next time the road test appear, and that's why I don't have the Faraday Future nowadays in a nutshell. Zero regrets about it by the way, but it's funny to see how the destiny of this car in Asphalt 9 is basically impossible to determine, because I really like how the road test looked like, if we remove, you know, the mechanics and the P2 inside, the laboratory mixed with construction zone aesthetic was kinda cool in my honest opinion, and the Faraday Future FF01 is a car that I really liked in real life. So it's kinda sad to see the status of the company as for now, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. But at this point of this video, it's your turn, guys. What do you think about the Faraday Future FF01? Do you really think it has any chance, you know, of maybe coming back, maybe through a different and hopefully easier way to be obtained in Asphalt 9 Legends? Well, let me know in the comment section, as always you all are invited to let me know your thoughts about it in the comments, as most of you guys know already, so make sure to drop your like, subscribe, and I will see you really soon as usual with much more Asphalt 9 content. Take care guys!